What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Today, I'm going to be getting into uh, another uh, Geography Now video. Now, I am going to get back to Africa. It's just that when I saw that this video was here, this was a video that I had to react to because, personally, I love Samoa. I love Samoa. I love the people of Samoa. I love the culture of Samoa. Um, I love the fact that it's like this island country that has built its culture around the ocean and just it's fucking cool in my opinion um i love the fact that they have like the like these awesome uh like war dances and they have let's be real they have some of the most luxurious hair of anybody on the entire damn planet <laughs> and they have some awesome tattoos they have like awesome food and like it's just it's just amazing so i decided I'm going to go ahead and take a minute to go and jump into Samoa because honestly, I probably wouldn't have a chance to react to this until I get to the Americas, in which case they're not on the use. They're nowhere close to the use, so they're not going to be on the United States anytime soon. I have done a reaction in Mexico and I believe Canada already, though. So technically, I have dabbled in the Americas. So let's go ahead and check this out and see what it has to offer. I'm looking forward to what it has to talk about because, again, Samoa fan over here. <laughs> And I'm just curious. I want to know what the, I want to know what's in the food because everybody that I've known from Samoa are strong as hell, like super strong. <laughs> and I want to know, like, okay, what's going on in Samoa? What are they train? How are they training? What's going on that's causing them to be so damn strong? But anyway, let's go ahead and check this out and see what it has to offer. If Polynesia was a family, Samoa would be kind of like the kingpin great-grandfather. Technically, every Samoan is considered royalty. But it all comes down to how good of a royal can you be? I mean, sure, if you got ties to the Ainga Tupu, it helps. But anything is up for grabs in Ofono Omatai if your Falupenga is on point. And once you got the Tama a Ainga title, you can secure a spot as the Ola Ao Ola Malo. <laughs> This is going to be a fun episode. Even the language just sounds like relaxed. Because they are some of the least studied places on earth with some of the most vibrant stories and traditions. Also, yes, we did have a social media campaign to try and get Dwayne The Rock Johnson in this episode. Art and I actually kind of <laughs> went up to his management office in Beverly Hills to see if we could reach out to him. Yeah, so we showed up at his management office and it was kind of awkward. They kind of looked at us like we're like from outer space or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, we got told, we got rejected we so got hard. We got rejected so bad. It's like... And then the whole coronavirus thing happened, uh, so... So uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to film with him anyway. So right, we <laughs> overshot the runway too much on this. We're mm. worthless. Anyway, we gotta shoot high. With social distancing practices. Obviously, Caleb and Jillian live in my house, so they're cool with being in these episodes. Art is mm -hmm. one of my closest neighbors. We walk, live within walking distance, so Art's gonna be in these episodes too. And Just, his mom makes really good chicken soup, so it's literally the only reason why I come over here. And uh, <laughs> we will have occasional guest stars, but only one at a time: Keith, Noah, and Hannah. That's how this is gonna work out. All right. Anyway, let's. Uh, jump into the episode. Samoa. You can't have Polynesia without starting and branching out from Samoa. All the Polynesian cousins sailed their ships out from Samoa at one point. And let's see what that point is on the map. The country is located in Oceania in the Pacific Ocean, specifically in the largest subregion known as Polynesia, shaped like a triangle starting in New Zealand, going up to Hawaii, and ending in Easter Island. Polynesia has over a thousand islands and archipelagos straddling millions of square kilometers of ocean territory. Samoa, though, is located about halfway between New Zealand and Hawaii, sandwiched between their cousins Tuvalu and Tonga. Now, keep in mind, the independent nation of Samoa is different from the U.S. overseas territory of American Samoa, which sits okay. at the shortest distance less than than 100 miles or 160 kilometers away. Keep in mind though. See, I thought they were both the same. Like, I thought it was just Samoa that was like an American colony type uh, situation, and that was it. So, already I'm learning. So the most absolutely mind-boggling thing between these islands is that they are literally divided by the international date line, which means they share the same time of day, but are exactly 24 hours apart, with American Samoa perpetually living in yesterday land and Samoa in tomorrow land. Technically, you can go to the future or past within a quick 35-minute flight between them. This is kind of why people typically buy two one-way tickets instead of a round-trip package when traveling between the two islands. It's like, wow, American Samoa was pretty cool, but I think I'll just take one of those 35-minute flights flights over to the country of Samoa. When will I arrive? In just over 24 hours. Wait, what? How is that even possible? Well, when will I return? Yesterday. 
Yeah, it can be a nightmare if you've never done it before. <laughs> in any case, the country is made up of two main islands that make up about 99% of the mm. landmass, Upolu, where about 75% of the population lives, and Savai'i, which has the remaining 25%. In addition, there are other smaller islands and rocks, such as Manono and Apolima in the Apolima Strait, the four Alepata Islands in the east off the coast of Opolu, Nu'utele, Nu'uala, Vanuatapu, and Namua, and finally, small little in the south just by the town of Putasi. Out of these islands, the country is divided into 11 Itumalo, or political districts, which are actually tied into historical Samoan communities that predate European contact. And the capital of the country, Apia, is located on the north side of Opolu Island. The country has one main international airport, Faleolo International. Otherwise, the country has three other regional airports on Savai, whereas Upolu has this extra one, but it was closed in 2019, but it might reopen. The locals are always arguing about it. From there, each island has a ring. It's interesting. The island with the most people has the least amount of airports. So it makes me wonder if there's like another reason why most people are flying to the second island. And maybe it's popular for um, people looking at wildlife or something. I don't know. but I'm just curious, like, OK, why would it the second island get the most airports? road that goes around the coasts and ferry services operate between the islands daily as well as ferries and flights between them and the u.s territory of american samoa keep in mind all together samoa and american samoa are collectively just called the samoan islands however sometimes to make the distinction you might hear the titles western samoa for samoa and american samoa or east samoa for the u.s territory of american samoa yeah in 2011 they actually moved the country's date ahead one day and skipped december 30th this was actually done to kind of boost their trade relations with New Zealand and Australia. It was like, hey New Zealand, it's Friday. Let's do some export deals. Oh, sorry man. Even though you're like one longitude length away, it's Saturday here and our offices are closed on weekends, man. Oh, shit. All right, look, man, this is ridiculous. This whole you being in yesterday thing is kind of stupid. Just switch it up and join our side. Eh, you're right. Hey, American Samoa. No, nah, I'm good. Fun fact, each mm. Itumalo actually okay. has their own constitution called so Fa'ava'e, based on the order of each district's falupenga. What is a falupenga? Basically, it's like a special greeting that each of the district chiefs have to memorize when they go and visit another district chief. So mm. it's like a passcode or something. No, it's a formal greeting acknowledging the history and lineage of the village and introducing yourself based off of your lineage and history. And it's all spoken in proper Samoan. So it's like a Shakespearean greeting. Eh, kind of? You have to be very eloquent if you're going to be one of the orator chiefs. For example, like this. Anyway, if you decide to visit some top notable spots that you guys, the Samoan yeah, geography the suggested I mentioned in this episode, that. include the market or Maketifu, the Samoan cultural village, the Robert Louis Stevenson Museum, the EFKS Museum of Fine Arts, the Falea Lupo ruins, Mosul's footprint, the Salea Ula lava field ruins, the largest fale at the University of Samoa, the ancient star mound of Manono Island, the House of Rock, the Vanya Taole Alo Gallery, the government house. There are many churches and places of worship like these. And there are so many natural spots and so many waterfalls. The most famous waterfall probably being Papapapai Tai Falls. Mm. There's so many caves as well, like the Dwarfs Caves and the Piula Cave Pools. The most famous notable spot in Landmark Dole would probably be the Pule Mele Pyramid Mound. Also, keep in mind, they do have a lot of amazing beaches, but almost none of them are public because they are owned by families or villages. So you'll have to pay a little fee to get on the beach. But anyway, speaking of beaches and natural landscape... <laughs> Now let's be for real. When you're in the middle of the ocean alone and isolated, every little bit of land matters. And with Samoa, they got kind of the jackpot. First of all, Samoa lies on the Pacific Plate right at the top of the Tonga Trench, part of a larger, highly volcanic area known as the Ring of Fire that circumvents the fringes of the entire Pacific Ocean. The volcanic activity is essentially what formed the islands as it lies on the Samoa hotspot, one of many noted magma plume upwellings that can be found scattered throughout the oceans of the world. Only one volcano is classified as active, Mount Matavanu on Savai Island, which last erupted for six years continuously between 1905 and 1911. It formed about 40 square miles or 100 square kilometers of new land in the form of a lava field on the north side. The tallest peak of the country, though, is Mount Silisili, which means highest, which is also located on Savai and is a dormant stratovolcano. From here, the two longest rivers, the Vaimali and Maliolio rivers, flow downward from the central Savai mountain spine. The largest inland body of freshwater, however, is actually Lake Manoto'o, a small 
crater lake found on the top of the hill on Upolu Island, just south of the capital. As okay, so in the event that there's a World War III, as I said, one of the countries that I'll end up going to is likely Sweden. I'm going to put that on my list because Sweden never gets messed with during World Wars, apparently. So that will be one area of destination I will have. But another area I'm going to add to my list is Samoa because it's out of the way. So chances are most places aren't going to really mess with it. And it has a volcano that's constantly creating new land. So eventually the island is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you don't have room now, just wait about a few a few years. You'll, you'll get some room at some point. But yeah, Samoa is another area that I'm going to have to add to my uh, doomsday uh, destinations. As an equatorial nation, they fall within the monsoon climate zone where temperatures are consistently warm almost year-round and the rainy season lasts between November and April. Occasionally, they might find themselves in the past of tropical storms or cyclones as well. Another cool thing is that Samoa was kind of volcanically formed a little different from all the other Polynesian islands. The distinct lava flow on the sides of Savai'i Island were carved by strong waves creating a complex underground cave system that eventually tunneled upwards to the surface, which is where you get the famous Alofaga or Taga blowholes. These water jets are created by pressure that flows into the tunnels from the ocean. Sometimes people like putting coconuts on these water jets and then blasting them upwards. Now, as a tropical Polynesian nation, of course, yes, Samoa is very lush and green. About mm -hmm. a fifth of the land is arable and about two thirds of the country are either employed or involved in agriculture. Agricultural products and fishing in themselves make up about 90% of exports, whereas the service sector employs about half of the workforce, mostly in tourism and hospitality, which make up about a quarter of their GDP. Nearly a quarter million people travel to Samoa Samoa and visit every single year and the number has actually been growing quite a bit in the past few years as Polynesian travel publicity has skyrocketed you know with the help of notable Polynesian based movies and films and stars highlighting their heritage I mean Hobbs and Shaw dang Mr. Rock I will never forget that Uso battle scene or the helicopter car chain thing that's Samoa in addition <laughs> Samoa is known for having a wide array of unique animal species and with that it's time for our animal correspondent Gary Harlow to step in Jillian. Hey guys. Oh. Um, Caleb's, I mean, Gary Harlow's not here right now. He's actually deworming a, a blue uh, elephant, but um. Uh, we need someone to do this though. Like many other islands of the Pacific, <laughs> Samoa doesn't have any endemic mammal species, the only true ones being bats and Polynesian rodents. Pigs, dogs, and cats are all over, but were introduced to the islands later by people. Otherwise, the country is loaded with reptiles like the native Samoan skink, the Polynesian gecko, and the Pacific boa. Heaps of marine species like parrotfish, surgeonfish, yellowfin tuna, and whales, and birds are everywhere. Over 80% are endemic and found nowhere else on Earth, like the Samoan flycatcher, the mao, Fantail, and the national animal, the Manomea, or two-filled pigeon. And that's it for me. Oh, oh. Yay. <laughs> and now we finish off this segment as we always do. That was disrespectful. Ooh, Very disrespectful. Some dishes of Samoa that you guys, the Samoan geography, suggested I mention. Faiai Eleni, Palusami, Faali Fu Fai, Ota Ia, Sua Ia, Faausi, Kopai, Pani Popo, Pani Keke, Keke Pua'a, Keke Saina, Sua Fai. And very often at celebrations or occasions or even just on Sundays, you'll see the umus happening all the time. Yeah, Samoans are incredibly communal people. They take filial piety and ancestor veneration to a whole new level. And with that, that brings us to... Now, when it comes to Samoa, you kind of have to know Fa'a Samoa, or the Samoan way. Every true Samoan knows about this, and in some way, shape, or form, to some degree, it affects their life. Everything you are and have, from land to water to birthright, are rooted back to the start. It's hard to understand. We'll explain in a bit. But first, Samoa has about 200,000 people and is the country with the highest population of native Polynesians in the world. And there are actually even more Samoans living abroad than there are in Samoa at about 600,000 globally. Hmm. The country is made up primarily of native Samoan people people, a Polynesian group at about 92% of the population. About 7% are Uranesians, whom are people that are mixed with European and Islander ancestry, in this case mostly half Samoan people. And the remainder of the population is mostly white and East Asian, coming from countries like South Korea and China. They use the Tala as their currency, they use the Type I plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. The main official language of the country, of course, is Samoan. It is the most prominently spoken Polynesian language in the world. And after that, English is co-official. Again, 
they have a history with the British and New Zealanders, blah, blah, blah. Believe it or not, if World War I did not happen, Samoa actually might have been speaking German today. In any case, back to the confusing lineage thing. There's a oh, that's right. They own those Ole territories. Ile Pule, Ole Tautua, which means the path to leadership is through service. Samoa Wasn't that a very unique system one of the countries Japan tried to get after World War I? Today, their government is classified as a parliamentary republic. However, it takes strongly into account the traditional Fa'amatai system. What is the Fa'amatai system? <laughs> well, it's actually pretty simple, see? It all starts out with the four original Paramount Chieftain Dynasty families that created the nation known as Atama Ainga. There's also a fifth one for American Samoa, but technically that one doesn't count. Keep in mind, the head of state or ceremonial president or the Ole Au Ole Malo always has one or more of these titles in his name. From these four dynasties, the 16 royal families or the Ainga Tupu were created. They were the ones that originally ruled the Itumalo. From there, the towns and villages have a Matai, which means chief. They meet in a Fono o Matai or council of other chiefs. You can be a regular Matai or a Matai Sili, which means high level chief. The chiefs come in two forms, the Ali'i or head chief and the Tulafale or orator chief, who does all the talking, debating, and announcing. Once you are a Matai, you are generally expected to hold the title until you die. On rare occasions, will they cede the title? Keep in mind, off to the sides, there might also be a Pule Nu'u, a lower level assistant who helps facilitate the Matai duties. From there, you have a Taupo, a chief's daughter or female relative, usually from the Ali'i. She holds an important role in preparing the Aba ceremony for the Matai events. Sometimes a male or Manaya can hold this role too, but often it is female. If a Matai dies or is somehow unable to hold the title and it becomes available, everyone in the immediate family is a Suli or candidate heir to the Matai title. And a series of speeches or concessions begin to find who will become the next Matai. Both men and women can fill the role. However, statistically, about 90% of Matai have been men and about 10% have been female. From there, you have the unranked plain village people or the Tangatanu or the Taule Alea, usually made up of younger people or people uninterested in holding traditional titles. See? Simple. Also, keep in mind, the Ava ceremony is incredibly important to Samoan culture. It's used for all I was lost on that. I'm gonna be real. for the Matai title bestowing ceremonies, like when a new Matai becomes a Matai. The bitter drink is prepared by people called the Aumaga using a Tanoa bowl and wringing out the roots oh, of the look like a psychoactive kava plant. Bubba Ray you Dudley. see this, then y'all know that some serious is going on. Taking all of that into account, you can probably see by now that Samoa is very steadfast in maintaining tradition and culture. Faith-wise, Samoa is pretty religious. About 98% of the population is Christian, the largest groups being Protestant-based. And often you might even find yourself in the middle of a prayer session. If you do, just be respectful, tone it down a little bit, or you can even participate if you want. Traditionally, though, their ancestors followed a form of Polynesian mythology that had numerous deities and spirits called Atua and Aitu. Interestingly enough, statistically, Polynesia is one of the few areas on Earth which has a birth rate of males that is higher than that of females. Today, the ratio sits at around 1.07 to 1 in Samoa. Anyway, the traditional house is called a fale, a round, thick, thatched roof gazebo type of structure with no walls, but blinds or nets can be draped down on the sides in between the columns holding up the roof. I mean, the weather is almost warm consistently throughout the year, so Samoans didn't really have to worry about insulation. Fine mats called toga so are cool. the most prized artifact of the country. I'm in Ohio. In all occasions, they're giving away I can't explain how bad weather so can be sometimes. <laughs> everything, even when you want to seek forgiveness from someone that you've wronged. It's actually even a tradition for them to cover themselves in a toga outside of the person's house with their extended family members as a sign of atonement. Often you will see people wearing lava lava cloth. It's the national cloth of the country, worn both by men and women. Usually men will just drape it around their waists. Women will make it into a body wrap dress. During celebrations, ceremonies, whatever, you might often find men doing the fa'a taupati slap dance and the slower, more poised siva dance by women. Speaking of which, they have a ton of cool festivals like the Fire Knife Festival, the Faltasi Outrigger Canoe Competition, the Tafasila Fa'i Festival, and the biggest one, Tewila, held around about the, the biggest activity was the hookah and cuisine displays. And then you get to the traditional tattoos made out of shark's teeth. Is that and Samoa? Yeah, the I'm hookah? Kind of tired of all this, actually. Is that what it's I'm called? Just host, host this <laughs> segment. So the war dance. You're, you're the last. Choice. You're the last resort. So yeah. The last resort. Now across Polynesia, you'll see tattoos everywhere, as they are a universal rite of passage. But each island and country has their own unique way of doing it. Unlike their cousins, the Maori, Samoan tattoos don't have spirals or curves. They're typically straight, geometric, and extend from the rib cage to the knees. Men's tattoos are called hea, and women's are called malu. And for women, the tattoos only extend from the thighs to the knees. It's a well-known fact that Samoans are famous for their athletic prowess. Historically, the Polynesian men were trained to be big and strong for warfare and competition. I mean, they even had some really cool weaponry. They had an impressive assortment yeah. of clubs, axes, daggers, maces, and spears. Did I just say daggers? You said daggers. 
Did I just say <laughs> dagger? Daggers. Anthropologists speculate that in addition to the possible genetic predisposition to gain more muscle, the abundance of available sustenance year-round on the island or seas around them allowed them to eat more and gain more mass. On the downside, Samoa and other Pacific islands have some of the highest rates of obesity, as well as other... Don't worry. It's American. I feel it too. Samoan and Pacific Islander men are top contenders for recruiting seasons in rugby and American football leagues. In the NFL, a Samoan male is often somewhere around 40 to 60 times more likely to be recruited against a non-Samoan counterparts, especially for a lineman or linebacker position. Mm -hmm. They are freaking huge, and the NFL wants huge people. You played football too, Art, didn't you? I did play football. Yes, I did. I might be considered big, but those guys are like really big. Wow. Speaking of big, Keith, he's been eating a sandwich. <laughs> Jealous? Jealous I've never spanked a bell like that. Mm. Uh, by the way, my buddy's band. I wonder how big his stats buffed when he did that. Due to fair use laws, don't Pokemon do fans get it. Or whatever, just don't sue him. As a Polynesian country, Samoa is heavily rooted in traditional sounds. As a country with no formal writing system, they depend heavily on oral tradition by documenting incidents through song and dance. Samoans love singing Check Out the Samoan High Note Challenge. Those videos are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Much of the music can be performed with traditional instruments like these. And maybe some of these. Otherwise, today, modern genres like Samoan style RB, poly reggae, and like jazz have made waves of popularity amongst the younger generation. Well, since I don't have a bass today, I guess I can uke my way on out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. And now it's time for the very condensed history segment of this episode. In the quickest way I can put it, Austronesians sail in and settle Samoa. The four Tama Aiga chieftain dynasties begin. The legendary warrior queen Nanafuna starts the Matai system. The Ainga Tupu royal family is established. More of Polynesia is settled. Samoa is taken over and breaks free from the Tui Tonga Empire. First European contact from British and Dutch in the 1700s. Missionaries bringing Christianity. Americans, British, and Germans all claim parts of Samoa. First Samoan civil war fought between rival Samoan factions. Second Samoan Civil War, Germany takes over for 14 years, the East Islands become a US territory, Mao movement for independence, World War I, the UK creeps in, kicks out the Germans, Samoa becomes a territory of New Zealand, Spanish flu kills off a fifth of the population, 1962 independence, New Zealand's Helen Clark issues a formal apology for the incidents of the 20th century, Samoa's last king dies at age 95, Samoa switches time zones, Hobbes and Shaw save the world from evil, and here we are today, some of the top notable people from Samoa that you guys suggested I mention in this episode include historical figures like Maliatoa Laupepa, Maliatoa Tanu Mafili the first, Luaki Namulau Ulu Mamoe, Maliatoa Tanu Mafili the second, as well as Cardinal Pio Taufinu U. Tons of professional athletes like these, lots of boxers like these, weightlifters, rugby him. players, American football players, wrestlers, people in the oh, business, wrestlers. arts and entertainment. Oh, era. wrestlers. Don't get me DJ started on Alpha, wrestlers. Robbie Magasiva, Jay Lagaaya, Beula Koale, Sima Urale, Nick Afoa, Paris Govel, Albert Went, Aggie Gray, of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And of course, there are so many famous musicians and artists and bands like these. I'm just going to put a bunch of them up on the screen. And finally, just some miscellaneous ones. Latafale Auva'a, Amy Maslin Miller, Chief Cielu Avea, and the Circus of Samoa. Yeah, for such a small island nation, Samoans have really stuck themselves out as Samoan special. <laughs> Anyway, off to the last segment, the friend zone. Now, ocean island nations have always kind of been an interesting place when it comes to diplomacy because everything is so spread apart that you kind of need anyone within the vast open void to lean on. That being said, Samoa does have quite a few contacts in their Rolodex. Although Fiji is classified as Melanesian, their close proximity to Samoa helps the kids know what a Rolodex is. Melanesia and Polynesia. Business, travel, and trade are not only huge. Seems like that them, died out with the cell kind of phone. Piggyback off of each other as well. Fijians even have their own and version computers. of the Ava ceremony, <laughs> and they even created their own haka chant at sporting events 
Islands, like the Maori of New Zealand. Tonga is kind of like the best rival. That's a hooka, cousin. haka. <laughs> I mean, a long time ago, they did kind of take over Samoa in the Tui Tonga Empire, and there were numerous battles and wars between them. But that was like so long ago, and everybody has forgotten about it. The two are close now. The countries and islands that culturally identify closest to Samoa, though, would probably be their immediate siblings, Tuvalu, and the three association states of New Zealand, Tokelau, Cook Islands, and Niue. Specifically, Tuvalu and Tokelau have the closest languages to Samoan. Some even say it's just a dialect. They all have very similar customs and cultures, as well as family lineages, as their ancestors fled to nearby islands, intermarried, and kept in touch pretty well. New Zealand is their biggest business partner and specifically plays a huge role in Samoa's affairs. And in 1962, they signed a treaty of friendship after independence. New Zealand has the largest Samoan population outside of Samoa. They are the largest hub of travel to Samoa. They are in charge of their military protection. And Samoa can request channels of communication to international organizations through New Zealand. When it comes to the ones closest to them, though, Samoans will probably say the American territory of Samoa. Essentially, they are the same people. Sure, one speaks with a Kiwi accent, the other speaks with an American. One drives on the right side, the other on the left. One plays rugby, the other one plays American football. But otherwise, same people. American Samoa actually had the chance to join them back in 1966 when the UN threw out the option, but surprisingly, they voted to stay as a territory of the US and take on US benefits. Nonetheless, both of them follow the same Fa'a Samoa system of life. They both have the Matai and Fale culture, and overall, they get each other the best. In conclusion, you cannot have Polynesia without Samoa. Everything between New Zealand, Hawaii, and Easter Island starts here. They are masters of the ocean, and if you are lucky to meet a Samoan, technically, you could address them by saying, Your Majesty. Stay tuned, San Marino is coming up next. <laughs> Yeah. I'm wondering um when it comes to uh Samoa as a whole, one second. When it comes to Samoa as a whole, I'm wondering like or American Samoa. Do they have any interest in becoming a US state? Because as a territory, I imagine that like you do have benefits, but you don't really get a chance to participate too much when it comes to uh like the political side of america to being able to vote and things like that and i was wondering if that's something that would interest them obviously i don't <laughs> like i don't know why i'm asking it that way it makes it sound like i have some type of authority in like that decision <laughs> i don't <laughs> but i would be curious to see what the people in samoa like what they're aspirations would be as far as like their relationship with the united states um like i said i love samoa um i love samoan people i love polynesian people because a lot of them regardless of where they're from all of them have like this this ability to get strong as hell all of them have absolutely luxurious hair the guys and the girls just just flowing um like it's they just come off as awesome to me i love the the island culture and how everything is connected to the ocean and things it it uh it's it's like i love the music <laughs> like everything about it's just relaxing but um yeah uh, let me know what you all think if there's anybody that's from samoa or has any samoan ancestry or polynesian uh, ancestry or from a polynesian country Go in the comment section and let me know what you uh, think about the the countries that you um, your family originates from. Let me know what your opinions about everything is. Let me know what uh, you feel best represents Polynesian culture and something that may have not been mentioned in this video that you think deserves some attention. Uh, be sure to let me know about it because I am very interested in knowing what everybody has to say about it. it it, it's really it just comes off as really cool to me but anyway uh, that's pretty much all i can say i'm devon da vinci i look forward to seeing you guys in a future video and until then i'm gonna give you the deuces and i am signing out so peace